With regards to the subject, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest, you see, it is very easy for one to elevate, to praise his hero, his saint, his imam, his prophet, very easy. To idolize our great men, very easy. And we all have a tendency to do that. Whether Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew, that whom do you esteem to be the greatest person? So each will give his hero according to his knowledge and experience. I had an occasion to take a Portuguese couple around the mosque in Durban. I happened to be one of the guides to the Juma Masjid Durban and it attracts a lot of visitors. So we take them around, explain to them what goes on and give them free literature. But talking to this Portuguese couple, the Portuguese gentleman, somehow the subject arose and he was telling me that the greatest man that ever lived was Dr. Salazar. Have you heard of him? Dr. Salazar. Bulk of the people, they never heard the name. But you can't take exception to his claim because he only knows Dr. Salazar. Can you see? To him, man, he must have done great work for his nation. He is the greatest man that ever lived. Dr. Salazar. So it's quite easy for one to idolize one's own hero. But if the tribute, the praise, the testimony comes from the opposite camp, that would be testimony indeed. We praise our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Christian praises Jesus Christ, the Hindu praises Rama and Krishna, it's natural. But if the enemy praises your hero, then that is real praise indeed. You agree? Coming from the enemy. Then in the Times Magazine, July 15, 1974, there were a series of essays under the heading, Who Were History's Great Leaders? Now the question is, the great leaders in history, so different people were questioned, religious men, mathematicians, psychologists, military men. Who do you think was the greatest leader of all time? You. Who do you think was the greatest leader of all times? And each according to his knowledge and experience, they gave the heroes. Some said Mahatma Gandhi, some said Confucius, some said Hitler. Not good or bad. We're not talking about good or bad. Some say Mussolini, from the point of view of leadership. The guy was great. Each giving his hero according to his experience and background, his knowledge. Among these contributors, there is one James Gavin. He is described as a United States Lieutenant General, retired. He's an American. In that article, he says, among leaders who made the greatest impact through the ages, I would consider, number one, guess who? Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, Muhammad. And as a Christian, he says, number two, Jesus Christ. Do you blame him? But I said, account for that. Why should he put our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, number one, and his own God and Savior, number two? Then there is another contributor to those articles by the name of Jules Masserman. He is described as a United States psychoanalyst. And you know the psychoanalyst, the job is to analyze the minds of men. And when they find a genius, they are looking for lunacy in the man. Because we are told that the difference between a genius and a lunatic is a very thin veil dividing the two. You know, just a little over, you are a lunatic, and a little this side, you are a genius. So in every genius, they look for lunacy. That is the job of the psychoanalyst. And he is a professor of the Chicago University, professor of psychology. He says that before you confer greatness upon any leader or would-be leader, we must first find out what we are looking for in the man. You just don't say this guy or that guy or that guy. We want to know what we are looking for in the man. And he gives us three objective standards. Number one, he says that that person, whoever he is, he must provide for the welfare of the lead. He's interested in your welfare, not in milking cows for himself. Like Reverend Jim Jones in Guyana, you know, he committed suicide with 910 of his followers. 911, 100% suicide. Not one guy was left alive. He made them to commit suicide because he was doing things wrong and he was being discovered. So he wanted to get rid of all evidence against him. And what better way than mass suicide? They call it the suicide cult. 100%. They wipe themselves out. But in the meantime, it was discovered that this man, Reverend Jim Jones, had salted away in the banks of the world $15 million in his own account. So his followers were his milking cows. He was using them. And he was now being found out, discovered. He said, no. This leader, whoever he is, number one, he must provide for the welfare of the lead. He's interested in your welfare. Number two, 
He must provide a social organization in which people feel relatively secure. Like our community. When you visit one another, you know, when you visit a Muslim brother, he invites you, if he's eating, so come on, sit down to eat. Have a cup of tea. Have some samosas. Innocent enjoyment. The other community says, Look, what about the drink? Brandy? What? He says, no. You see, this Islam that made it so, that we have innocent enjoyments. You don't want to go and dance with your brother's wife? Hmm? Or somebody, you want to take her to the dance? You want to do this? You want to drink? What for? No. We have innocent enjoyments. Provides a society in which people feel relatively secure. Number three, and that person must provide for unity of belief. Well, what are our little differences? We have our arguments and our debates on the size of the beard. So, mashallah, you got a nice beard, but why don't you make it standard size, my brother? <laughs> hmm? This brother here is so old, I said, look, man, when are you going to start keeping one? And so on and so on. You see this mustache of yours? You are not supposed to shave. You are supposed to clip it. Do you know that? We, we enjoy these luxuries. These are luxuries which we enjoy. We have our debates and our arguments, but as a people, as a whole, thousand million, we are agreed on Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That we testify that there is but one Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, the last and final messenger of God. On that, the whole Muslim world, Alhamdulillah, we are agreed with the Sunni or Shia. We are agreed. There is but one Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and is the last and final messenger of God. Unity of belief. With these three standards, he searches history. And he analyzes Louis Pasteur, the guy who discovered the microbe. Salk, he analyzes Salk. And he analyzes Mahatma Gandhi and Confucius and Moses and Jesus. And he comes to the conclusion that the greatest leader of all time was who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa this Jew, a paid servant of the American government, he said the greatest leader of all time was Muhammad. And to a lesser degree, whatever Muhammad did, he said Moses did the same. His hero comes number two. We take off our head to the man, shouldn't we? Look, what made him to say that? Unless it must be so.